Good morning. Welcome to worship. Please rise as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your way to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. A reading from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, 
but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he may be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? For you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger... His Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. As we've gone through this season of Pentecost, We've heard lessons about caring for one another, about women making personal sacrifices to protect others, 
and today about patience and forgiveness. I've created a picture in my mind of evenly spaced stepping stones, each stone being a Sunday. The stones are connected by the lessons we hear. There's a, in a path running from one to the next. Try to picture it with me. The path in between the Sunday stones is our weekly walk, Monday through Saturday. Our intents and our actions place new stones between those Sundays. Those stones vary in size. If our thoughts and actions are rooted in the lessons and in our faith, we build an evenly spaced level path of stones. If they are not rooted in our lessons and faith, we have a rocky and ragged trail. The flat, smooth sections are signs of encouragement, signs of those Sunday lessons at work in our lives, even though we may not have recognized them at the time. So in preparing for today, I look back on this picture I've created to find places where I had guidance, where important lessons were at work in my life, and I found a few that I could share to help reflect on today's gospel lesson. Today's lesson is a story of patience and forgiveness. It has a heartwarming beginning with patience and a harsh ending with punishment. I want to reflect on the patience part. For me, patience requires three things, acceptance, empathy, and myself. Now that last one is two words, my self. Myself holds my past, my secrets, my values, and my faith. To be the best me, I have to trust myself. I have to listen to myself. I need to like myself because myself guides me in my relationships with other people. Believing and trusting in myself gives me the confidence to seek and nurture fulfilling relationships with others. A healthy relationship with myself also depends on having a healthy relationship with God and recognizing his presence. I like the way Pastor Kimberly described it. I think it was last week. She described a picture of the Holy Spirit when she prays. She sees a flame burning inside her and feels its warmth. She invites the Holy Spirit in, and the warmth of that flame announces its presence. I like that picture, and that type of presence makes myself complete. Now, it's taken a long time for me to come to this view of myself. Believe it or not, I was born in 1959, just 98 days before the start of the 60s. So I am now living in my eighth decade. I know that math doesn't make sense, but this is my eighth decade. I do certainly feel qualified to say, oh, so much has changed, but that's not what I'm going to say today. Today, I'm reflecting on the things that have not changed, things that have stayed with me, like learning acceptance. I remember watching our black and white TV in the living room, my brother and I laying on the floor right up close to the TV. I remember President Kennedy's funeral procession. I remember Mickey Mantle and the Yankees. And in February 1964, the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan Show. I was four years old. They were magical. They wore cool suits. They bobbed their heads. They swayed back and forth as they played the music. And their songs had an energy I hadn't seen before, and they had really catchy lyrics. They were fun. I immediately loved the Beatles. But I also recall at that time, my mom and dad talking about how some people they knew didn't like the Beatles. People said the Beatles were a bad influence on their kid. They were stirring things up and causing trouble. 
but how could you not like the Beatles? Their songs were happy. Their songs were about love. She loves you, all my loving, and I want to hold your hand. I just didn't get it. But I did know that the Beatles were very welcome in our house. It was okay to like them, and it was okay to listen to them. And it became okay to listen to the many other singers and bands that followed in the years ahead. So listening to music and sharing music was a very big part of my family's life together. Over time, we also grew to accept that even if we didn't all like the same music, it was all okay and it was okay to listen to it as long as you didn't anger mom by turning the volume up past six. <laughs> by the time I was 11, I had a collection of several hundred 45 RPM records purchased for 15 cents each from a jukebox company just down the street from my school. They sold them after they took them off the jukeboxes. So I had already heard the songs. I liked their lyrics, and I wanted to own it and be able to listen to them whenever I wanted. At the 8.30 service, for the younger people who were there, I described 45 RPM records as kind of like Spotify in boxes. As I said, what attracted to me to those records were their lyrics. Poetry and short stories paired with notes. That interest led me to a creative writing course in my senior year of high school. Now the teacher had been around the school for years and everyone had had her English classes. She was strict about the rules, grammar, spelling, proper sentence formation, you get the picture. But in creative writing, she was different. She was more like a part of the class, not the teacher standing at the front of the room telling you what to do. She explained to us that everyone could easily get a B by just doing the writing assignments on time and being in class for discussions. But if you wanted an A, you had to earn it. You had to open up. You had to really be willing to express your thoughts and your feelings and your desires. We needed to acknowledge each other's experiences and respect others' different experiences and inspirations. We also had to accept the reality that others would have different interpretations of our writings. She asked probing questions about what inspired us, why we wrote what we wrote. She gave us the freedom to learn about ourselves, and she gave us the responsibility together to learn about each other and to learn from one another. And in that class, I began to develop the gift of empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand another person's thoughts and feelings in a situation from their point of view rather than our own. But for me, it is more than just an ability. Empathy requires the desire to understand others, the willingness to spend the time and make the effort to see another's point of view, and to accept that their different view does not make them less than us. Empathy also requires being curious. I'm a big fan of Ted Lasso. The, Net, the Netflix show. Now, Ted Lasso is a successful American football coach who was hired to coach a British soccer team. He's a bit hokey, he is socially awkward, but he is principled and he has keen insight into people. This scene is set in the neighborhood pub with all the regulars around. Ted is there with the new soccer team owner, Rebecca, who hired him to come to England. Rupert, her ex-husband and the former owner of the team, is also there. Well, Rupert thinks Ted is a hillbilly, and he claims that Rebecca has ruined the team by bringing Ted to England to coach. 
He threatens to go to the press and tell them that Rebecca has just ruined the team. Ted plays the white knight. He wants to protect Rebecca and the team. So using his good old boy character, Ted baits Rupert into challenging him to a game of darts. If Ted wins, Rupert keeps quiet. Now Rupert is known as a very, very good darts player, so nobody in the pub gives Ted a chance. Well, as you can imagine, the game comes down to Ted's last turn and Rupert is in the lead. Ted needs to throw three perfect darts to win the game. So he steps up to the line, and as he does so, he says, you know, Rupert, guys have underestimated me my entire life, and for years, I never understood why. It used to really bother me. Then one day, I was driving my little boy to school, and I saw a quote painted on the wall, and it said, be curious, not judgmental. I like that. And Ted throws a perfect dart. So I get back in my car and I'm driving to work and all of a sudden it hits me. All of them fellas that used to belittle me, not a single one of them was curious. You know, they thought they had everything all figured out. So they judged everything and they judged everyone. And I realized that they're underestimating me. Who I was had nothing to do with it. Because if they were curious, they would have asked questions. Questions like, have you played a lot of darts, Ted? And Ted throws another perfect dart. To which I would have answered, yes, sir. Every Sunday afternoon at a sports bar with my father. From age 10 until I was 16 when he passed away. And then Ted takes a breath. And for good luck, he says, barbecue sauce. And he throws a bullseye and he wins the game. Be curious, not judgmental. I like that. Thanks, Ted. Now, together, let's be curious for a moment. How do you think that slave in today's gospel lesson felt the next day after the king punished him? Do you think he was sorry? I think he probably was. He never thought about what might happen tomorrow when he made the decision to not follow the example the king had shown him in showing him mercy and forgiving his debt. He didn't think about the problems he might have because of that bad decision. There's a song by Luke Combs that speaks about this kind of thing. It's titled, Tomorrow Me. It is about fighting the temptation to do things that we know will not work out because they didn't work in the past. And to repeat them will cause pain and regret the same way it did before. It's about how today's impulsiveness leads to tomorrow's regret. The song inspired me to think about the three me's of myself. Yesterday me, today me, and tomorrow me. Yesterday me has all my memories, good and bad, including my decisions that didn't work and the actions that caused pain to myself and others. Today me is responsible for keeping temptation at bay, heeding lessons learned, and having the patience to wait for better outcomes, and to not dismiss the challenges that others may be facing. Today me is the one who maintains that healthy relationship with myself. And today me does not want to disappoint tomorrow me. Because tomorrow me always knows better. Tomorrow me will always have to pick up today's me's pieces and put them back together. Tomorrow me will have to be the one to ask forgiveness for what today me did. So if today me 
keeps tomorrow me in mind, then tomorrow me should have a good day. So tomorrow me, by Luke Combs, says in the chorus, tomorrow me ain't going to like the way things go tonight. If I let you in and think that it'll be different this time, so maybe we should let yesterday be, because I got to live with tomorrow me. Now, I know you want to remember this. Kathy said many times, and just recently the other day, we were going somewhere in the car and listening to music, and she said, you know, if I would have put my class notes to music, I would have aced every test. So in an effort to help you recall what I've said today, and with my apologies to you and Luke Combs, I'm going to give it a try. So here goes. Tomorrow me ain't gonna like the way things go tonight. If I let you in and think that it'll be different this time. So maybe we should let yesterday be. Yeah, maybe we should let yesterday be. Because I got to live with tomorrow me. Thanks for listening. Amen. Please rise for the hymn of the day.
Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We pray for the church. Bless the missions and ministries of diverse congregations that they uplift the good news of salvation in ways that can be understood. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and healing to rivers clogged with pollution. Enrich the soil for trees and plants. Protect the crops needed to feed those who hunger. Comfort and provide for all people suffering from natural disasters, especially the people of Morocco. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who govern, especially Chris, our mayor, Phil, our governor, and Joe, our president. Encourage those in positions of power to lead with empathy, practice forgiveness, and care for those who struggle. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind, for those strained financially, for all living with chronic pain, mental illness, the disease of addiction, or otherwise afraid or in harm's way. Protect all who cry out for mercy, especially Anne, Mark, William, Bernie, Joe, Ed, Richard, Jennifer, Jean, Lisa, Stu, Peter, and Carol. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation. Open our hearts to practice intentional invitation. Help us to forgive each other, practice patience, and choose welcome over judgment. Move us to care for those in our community seeking refuge and safety. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion, made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment and greet one another. One moment.
call your attention to the announcements on the page you got with your bulletin. First, we are not passing offering plates today, but you'll find offering plate on the table in the narthex as you exit the sanctuary. We are having a congregational work day on Saturday, September 30th at 9.30 in the morning. And there will be options to do things for people of all abilities. There's more information on that in the announcements. And a reminder that anyone who prefers to receive a hard copy of the TIPS newsletter, please contact Deb in the office and let her know. She'll make that happen. Likewise, if you're not receiving the TIPS newsletter by email and would like to, contact Deb as well. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.